Hello, I'm Dr. Arifa Kassaboy, a practicing internist and a medical editor for Medscape and WebMD. Welcome to our weekly brief on recent medical news and findings. In our first report, the American College of Physicians is recommending a more conservative approach to non-radicular, acute, subacute, and chronic low back pain. ACP's new guidelines are based on a review of research on non-invasive, non-drug therapies, as well as medications for low back pain. The first line of management for acute or subacute low back pain should incorporate non-drug therapies such as superficial heat, massage, or even acupuncture or spinal manipulation. NSAIDs or muscle relaxants can be considered if other therapies fail. For chronic back pain, also consider exercise, rehab, mindfulness-based stress reduction, tai chi, or yoga. Other medications to try after NSAIDs include tramadol and duloxetine. Prescribing opioids is strongly discouraged. The bottom line, most patients with acute or subacute low back pain improve over time, regardless of management, and ordering costly tests and treatments is counterproductive. Next, a new study supports an association between a genetic predisposition for abdominal adiposity and the development of type 2 diabetes and coronary heart disease. Using genetic variants from genome-wide association studies and from the UK Biobank, researchers developed a genetic risk score that predicted the tendency to carry abdominal fat. They showed that a higher waist-to-hip ratio adjusted for BMI correlated with higher triglycerides, fasting blood sugars, and systolic blood pressure. These findings may explain some of the variation in the incidence of type 2 diabetes and heart disease observed across individuals and subpopulations. For example, the high risk for CHD seen in South Asians and the excess risk in men versus women. And finally, a recent study highlights one of the unintended consequences of screening mammography. Among more than 250,000 women, those who had a suspicious mammogram that turned out to be benign were more likely to delay or even skip their next screening. The women who had a false positive mammogram delayed their next test for a median of 10 months longer than women who'd had a negative mammogram. And women who had a biopsy were 19% less likely to return for regular screening compared with women who underwent only additional imaging. Why is this important? The odds of being diagnosed with late-stage cancer were higher for women who'd had false positive mammograms. Breast cancer survival depends on early detection, and we should continue to encourage our patients to adhere to regular mammography screening. Each of the stories included in today's news brief have links to their full reports in the transcript listed below. For Medscape and WebMD, I'm Dr. Arafa Kassaboy.